How is it going? I hope everyone's doing well, and thank you for tuning in this video. Today, I'm here with my final installment of my Undertaker The Last Ride reviews, Chapter 5, Revelation, the final chapter in the Last Ride series. And oh boy, what a newsworthy chapter this was. A lot to talk about, so let's not waste any time and dive right into things. Now, Chapter 5 opened up immediately following Chapter 4, you know, recapping Undertaker's Extreme Rules 2019 performance and talk about how he felt really good, but it was coming coming down to a matter of fact that you know does he feel good enough to where that was a good enough performance where he can let go or is that a good enough performance where he goes you know what i still got a few more in me i can keep going so that was a big question but obviously you know it followed up with you know him telling vince that he was done that he was you know pretty much done after that match and unfortunately there's absolutely no follow-up to the ending of the, the fourth chapter where he pulled aj aside and told the camera crew to not record it i mean obviously i wasn't expecting them to go up to like taker or aj interview him asking what they talked about but they didn't even touch up on it they briefly showed them walking and that was it so i kind of wish they kind of briefly touched up on that but they really didn't so that was disappointing but after extreme roles you know you got, you got undertaker sitting around you know kind of wondering what does mark calloway do you know with the undertaker being done you know that's all he's been that's been his identity for the past 30 years so once that's all over with you know what does he do going back to normal life as mark calloway and that was you know the big thing to him that you know that's why he kept going because he was just the uncertainty of what he does next and you know living that life where you're not in you know in wrestling anymore it was uh a big issue with them and that was something he definitely had to cope with and try to accept and you know that was pretty much the whole basis of the series was him trying to cope and accept that and he was you know finally turning around to that um they went to you know him at smackdown in madison square garden which honestly i have no memory of that so i don't remember if his segment even aired on tv uh you know the show was definitely you know tv but i don't remember if his segment aired so i have no idea if it even did or not but uh Undertaker talked about how awesome you know it is to always perform at as square garden he talked about how he looks at the picture of picture of uh almost called i almost said mustafa ali but muhammad ali and elvis presley at the wall mass square garden and he always you know thinks about how you know amazing and surreal it is that he gets to perform the same place that they perform so he always cherished that and he actually got his picture underneath elvis and you know he just talks about how surreal that is so you know it shows him kind of his promo thinking everyone in msg a uh, pretty heartfelt you know moment for him and it was a uh, very very uh touching and I, I thought it was a really nice touch you know it talks about his appreciation for the fans talked about you know if it wasn't for them you know how would he be where he is now and at that point, you know, he, he was he was ready for closure. He was ready to walk away from wrestling. He was done. You know, he felt like he, he gave all he could. And uh, there's nothing really much for him to do. And that segued away into him talking about, you know, uh, him bringing his dad backstage for for, for shows. And uh, when he was putting on makeup, you know, his dad sits there and shake his head watching him put his makeup on. Uh, you know, he really put over his dad. And obviously, you know, his dad's no longer with us. But, you know, it was very heartfelt you know seeing him talking about his dad and him you know saying how he misses his dad and it was very emotional and you know that segued way into undertaker appearing on the broken skull ranch or not spoken broken skull ranch broken skull Sessions. sorry appeared on there obviously with stone cold and you know it was uh that podcast actually that set up the match with aj styles you know uh aj's friend or aj claims his friend watched it and text him after saying like hey is taker done like is he gonna retire seemed like he was you know in the the podcast when he was asked about you know if he's gonna wrestle again and aj's like you know what if taker is gonna retire soon you know i want to see if i can get a match out of him and that's exactly what aj did aj was like hey vince can i wrestle taker uh, vince told him to talk to taker talk to taker because uh him and taker are actually friends uh, i think aj's best friends is, was like neighbors with undertaker for a while or something like that to that extent so aj and taker have actually known each other for like 10 years or whatever so that was very interesting to see that they've had a relationship prior to AJ going to WWE. But, uh, you know, AJ called Undertaker and, you know, pretty much said, hey, man, if you want to wrestle WrestleMania, I'd love to do it. And Taker pretty much told him, like, you know what, man, 10, 15 years ago, I would have loved to. But now it's, you know, not likely. And AJ pretty much told me, oh, just think about it. Don't make any decisions now. Just, you know, let us know when you need to. Uh, but, you know, just consider it. And, uh, you know, Taker thought about it. And even Michelle McCool was telling him, like, you know what? If you had had one last WrestleMania match as one person to face, it's AJ Styles. That's the only person that could bring the best out of you in this current environment in wrestling. You know, obviously no one in the past can. You know, there's no better person to wrestle with with the Undertaker in the ring right now than AJ Styles. So it just it made all the sense in the world. And, you know, Taker you know considered it considered it uh you know showed him going to the pc helping out the younger talent and taker man talk about giving back to the business taker if there was a godfather in wrestling like a legitimate one i know obviously the, the, the character of the godfather but like a real godfather it's the undertaker he's all about giving you know he's 
it's all about giving you know he wants the business to succeed past him he wants to take what he he'd had and pass it on to the next generation because then they want he wants them to do the same thing pass it on to the next generation it's to keep the business going he wants you know to give back to it and that's one thing that you know really sucks about nowadays because a lot of wrestlers nowadays are all about themselves and you see a guy like the undertaker's documentary where he doesn't care about himself it's all about the business he wants to make sure it has a huge future and you know he did he dedicated his life to make sure that you know it looked the best it possibly could so to see take interact with the younger talent and try to really you know get them to understand you know what it means to you know do the favor for the younger talent and you know help them out uh i thought it was great seeing that you know him working at the pc working with younger guys and having like a mini match in the ring and whatnot so that was great and that you know actually inspired taker to, to do wrestlemania you know helping the younger talent and getting the chair at the pc taker said you know yeah yeah vince i'll do it but uh him and vince actually ribbed aj he told uh vince to tell aj that he's gonna do mania but he's not gonna work him so Vince told AJ, he's like, you know what, uh, Taker's doing mania, but he's going to put some else, someone else over. And AJ kind of saw through the bullshit right away. He's like, no, he's fucking not. And AJ called Taker. He's like, you're bullshitting. And, you know, he was. So, yeah, uh, Taker agreed to do the match. And then, obviously, you know, they showed the Super Showdown stuff with Taker, you know, uh, beating AJ to kind of set up for that match. Uh, you know, showed him doing some cardio training for you know his match with aj because obviously the older he gets you know the better he needs his career to be and you know the the older he gets you know the worse it kind of gets so you have to try even harder just uh he even said he has to train 10 times harder just to give uh, a quarter you know of what he, he used to be able to do so um you know he, he trained really hard and they talked about aj styles promo on him where he, you know called out michelle mccool and you know broke the fourth wall and everything and you know michelle mccool's even talked about how you know she was getting like action not not, not like legitimately heated but like he's he was doing such a great job or like she was like she was buying into it she was feeding into him like oh shit fuck this guy he's doing such a great job i'm legitimately hating him even though i know it's a work so that just goes to show you how great that promo was and that led into talking about the evolution of the undertaker because obviously you know when taker even said it when aj involved michelle mccool and said all that stuff how can you have the dead man you know take him on after that so at that point you know you kind of had to develop and they that talked in the undertaker talking about how he had developed his character for the attitude era you know involving to the american badass showed the debut at, a, at you know judgment day 2000 and all that so uh you know they're talking about his character evolutions and he talked about for this match he wanted to take all three elements you want to take the dead man you want to take the american badass and you want to take mark calloway and you want to put that all into you know the character that we saw at wrestlemania 36 you know you want to see those two characters beat his ass and also see mark calloway as a man defend his wife and uh, obviously, that's exactly what we got. And then, you know, talked about, obviously, the course of WrestleMania changing due to the fact that COVID-19 arose. And obviously, everything for WrestleMania changed. You know, Undertaker and AJ Styles, their match got changed from being a regular match to a Boneyard match, which they even said, you know, they, you know, take your ass, what's a Boneyard match? And Triple H said, I don't fucking know. <laughs> we'll make it up as we go. So they had no idea what a Boneyard match was, but... Uh, they talked about the pat, you know, the process of it. They talked about, you know, uh, how they f- they found the location about forty five minutes away from the performance center. It was a shithole, but they uh, they fixed it up and made it to what you know, we saw at the Boneyard, which looked very very nice. And uh, what sucked was before they filmed the Boneyard match the day before, um, Undertaker's brother uh, passed away. You know, he got a call from his niece, and he said, you know, he usually doesn't answer, but he answered for some reason at the very last ring and got the news that his brother passed away and. That really, you know, kind of that really affected him. You know, he got really emotional talking about it in the documentary, and you know, really shows showed the person. You know, obviously, all these years we've gotten the kayfabe Undertaker in public. You know, if we ever saw him in public, but now to see him as the man Mark Calloway, completely different story. And to see that emotion, that side of him was, uh, you know, you you can connect to him. You can really feel how he felt in. Uh, yeah, you know, he had to film the Boner match that day uh, after getting the news. So, uh, you know, I can only. F- imagine how he felt having to do that but yeah talk about the boneyard uh boneyard match process you know filming it you know they had some behind the scenes stuff with like jeremy borash and triple h you know kind of directing it uh talked about how it took eight hours of film you know they didn't stop until like 5 a.m in the middle of the night uh taker that the spot where he actually breaks the window with his hand and shatters it he actually legitimately like fucked his arm up like he even said like they had to stop filming that you know uh uh help his arm and 
this he said the one thing that really sucked about filming this was the constant stoppage because obviously matches it's go 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 so you have that adrenaline going the entire time but when you have stop and go you have time for that adrenaline to, to calm down and then he even said like that's when the pain starts aching in you know obviously in a match you keep going you don't feel that pain until afterwards but when you're filming and you take breaks you're feeling the pain so Undertaker was like man you know that pain i felt in my arm i didn't feel it but since they had to sit and wait for a while he was really feeling that pain so i started aggravating him but yeah uh the whole filming of it you know taker talked about how proud he was of the boneyard match it wasn't what he expected but it was probably better than it would honestly let's be real if taker and aj had a legitimate match it would not have been anywhere near as good as this was and that's that's just a fact i'm sorry but it is and uh you know it was the best way they possibly could have went about it and i thought it was a fantastic match and um Undertaker was very, very pleased with it. He was very happy with everyone's feedback of it as well. And he said, he even said it, if there was a perfect storybook ending, it was that match because, you know, the way he rode into the sunset and everything like that, uh, it was perfect. And he said that after that match, he, he had no desire to get back in the ring. And he said on record, you know, never say never, but as of right now, he has no desire to get in the ring again. And he said that, you know, the only reason he would ever consider getting back in the ring would be if Vince was like in a really, uh, you know, big pinch or really small pinch. That'd be the only reason he would consider stepping back in the ring. But as of right now, The Undertaker is pretty much retired, and I'm pretty sure everyone knew that was the end goal of this documentary. You know, from the get go, I'm pretty sure everyone figured that Undertaker would end this documentary with his retirement, and uh, that's pretty much what we got. Even though he never flat out said I'm retired, he pretty much said it, you know, insinuating it that he's he's not going to back in the ring and he doesn't want to. And he shouldn't, you know, people have been saying it for years that he shouldn't retire, but I truly believe right now there's no reason for Undertaker to step, in, step back in the ring. There's no need for it. You know, that bone yard match was the perfect way to send him off. They were able to hide any, you know, bad, you know, not bad, you know, qualities, but all his weaknesses that, you know, he can't perform to the level he used to perform, obviously, years ago. Uh, but they were able to hide all his weaknesses, you know, in a cinematic match. And uh, I thought that was the best way they could have presented him rather than having a live match. So... Yeah, the documentary ends with Undertaker, you know, thanking everyone, you know, talking about how, you know, now it's more important to spend time with your family, you know, obviously due to like all these, you know, his, his deaths in the family, you know, deaths in the real world, like Kobe Bryant, that impacted him pretty bad as well. And you know, obviously the COVID-19, just everything in the world today is really opening up his eyes that he needs to really, you know, kind of step back and spend time and live uh, in the moment and not, you know, focus so much on a career, but, you know, spend time with his family and live with his family. So uh you know yeah it was a great ending and you know it was very emotional this entire episode i'll say this chapter five revelation might be the best produced piece wwe has ever done in a documentary i thought it was fantastic this the inside looks and just the way everything's presented you got that personal emotional level from the undertaker you felt what he was saying you saw him getting emotional breaking down it was tremendous and you i felt goosebumps and i felt sadness at the end but it wasn't a sadness because i was just sad but it was like happy sadness because you know i'm pretty sure everyone has been wanting him to have that, that perfect ending and you know he finally got it he finally got that perfect ending and uh, you know hopefully he sticks to it hopefully he never comes back <laughs> only because obviously like i said perfect ending there's no reason to ruin it don't pull a Shawn michaels and have a great ending and then come back and fuck it all up but yeah undertaker he's officially retired and couldn't be any more happier for him he definitely deserves it like i said he's been the godfather of wrestling He's been the go-to guy. He's the most respected, you know, figure in wrestling of all time, if you ask me. Character or person. I don't think there's any person in wrestling that has more respect than The Undertaker. He's just tremendous. And uh, he's going to be missed, you know, obviously, even though Undertaker has been putting on five-star classics in the past 10 years. Uh, he's still been going out there. And, you know, it's always been a treat to see him. And, um, you know, even though it's relieving as a fan to see him get that closure, it's, it's still sad, you know, to, to know that we'll never see an Undertaker match again. I mean, never say never, like he said, but chances are we won't see another Undertaker match ever again. So, um, yeah, I was very pleased with this documentary. I was very pleased with this entire series. What a fucking series this was. Definitely go out of your way to watch if you haven't seen it. All, four, uh, all five parts are definitely must-see. Um, tremendous stuff all around. You definitely get, you know, pretty much every look at the Undertaker you possibly could have. You couldn't have gotten more personal with him. You got a great look of who he is as a person, not just the character. And you definitely just, you go, you see how much he sacrificed for us as a fan. 
you know, he put his livelihood, he put his, he put everything in the line for wrestling and he made it his number one priority. He made, he put Vince McMahon and WWE above everything else in his life for a long time. And, you know, it's about time for him to put everything else above wrestling for once in his life. So he absolutely deserves, you know, everything come for him going forward in terms of, you know, retirement, sitting back, relaxing with his family. Undertaker, thank you for everything. 30 plus years in the business, you know, just for WWE alone, he's been there for 30 years, but he's been in the business for 30 plus years. And it's just absolutely incredible to see the longevity that he's had. We'll never see another person like him. We'll never see another career like his. We'll never see another character like him. Uh, just a once in a lifetime character in person. And and uh, I'm very, I'm very honored to have uh, been able to see him and uh, be able to live through his career. So Thank you, Undertaker. Thank you, WWE, for his fantastic series. Tremendous stuff overall, like I said. Incredible finale. Like I said, perhaps the best piece in WWE ever in terms of, you know, uh, projects and uh, uh, video releases. So, tremendous stuff and incredible documentary, incredible chapter, and incredible career for Undertaker. And ladies and gentlemen, the dead man can finally rest in peace.